That's a 14-foot ladder that's suspended from the ceiling. It's a 300-pound rated ladder, so it's pretty heavy. Heavy enough that it has to have a pretty rugged structure to be hanging from the ceiling there. This setup has worked out surprisingly well, so I'll show you how you can do this as well. Note that in this building, the trusses are running this way. And so that's a consideration. It would be easier to run your ladder parallel to the trusses because then you can just use two by fours and fasten them directly to the sides of a truss or ceiling joist or rafter. In such a case, you could just lag or screw or nail your boards right to the sides of a truss and you could have them either 24 inches away, which would work, or you could put them to the outsides or to the inside and it would still work. In my case, the distance between them is 24 inches out to out. And the reason that I did that was simply because the pipe inside is cut to 24 inches. Yeah, that's right, this is two pipes. This one is just a PVC roller that makes it easier to get the ladder on and off. Inside is just a piece of electrical conduit, the metal stuff. It doesn't have to be that strong because the weight is so close that the span puts very little strain on this. And you might be wondering, is it strong? From bracket to bracket, I have 10 feet, and this is a 14-foot ladder, which means that you should have, you know, about two feet sticking on each end. Ladders typically go in two-foot increments, so whatever your ladder is, just subtract four. This two-foot in relationship also works pretty well for putting the ladder into place and taking it back out. Let me say a few things about height for a moment. I'm standing on a bucket, which makes it comfortable to take this on and off. But consider that I have nine foot ceilings here. The length of my two by four cut was 24 inches, and that's all the way to the top of the truss. So you have to add an additional four inches from what you see here to get your length. Your situation is likely to be different, so you'll have to adjust accordingly. A good rule of thumb, or finger rather, would be to relax as you stand and see where your finger lands. That's where you want this to be. That way when you stretch up on your tiptoes, you'll be able to take this on or off without trying too hard. Careful though, it's a bit of an art. If you make this space between the ladder and the ceiling too small, then when you pull it out and lay it down, it's likely to bind up and hit your ceiling. So do a little bit of head scratching and think about everything you can before you decide. Take a look at the connection here. Note that there's a 15 16 hole drilled and that's to accommodate the 3 quarter inch inside diameter electrical conduit. Then you'll have to drill directly through the center of this hole and insert a screw in. Don't just use a drywall screw. Use something beefy that can withstand some shear force. I use an old-fashioned wood screw. The two screws kind of lock it into a sideways distance. The white pipe is cut to length such that it's tight to both 2x4s. In this case, since my outside to outside distance was 24, my white pipe is 21 inches. 3 quarter ID conduit, 1 inch ID PVC. It makes a nice, easy, makeshift bearing. Finally, attaching at the top. You'll have to cut some drywall. Use a keyhole saw. It's the easy way. Let's pretend as though your trusses go the way that makes it easy. Then you can just attach directly from one to the other. Don't use drywall screws. They can snap off under shear. Use a combination of 
screws and nails if you must, but I would prefer it if you used a lag like I did, or two. My upright boards are two and three quarters of an inch. Why? Because that's what I had. And my trusses go in this direction with the lag moving through them this way. And it has a big old washer on it. How many did I use? Just one four inch lag on every one of the uprights. I have seen some awful ladder setups in my life and this one looks simple and as though I threw it together but I actually put a lot of thought into this. So I hope you consider it. Hope you found this useful. See you on the next subject. Bonus feature. If you like it, then you gotta put a lag in it. There are right and wrong ways to put a lag in. Let's pretend that this is our truss and this is our upright. And we want to fasten it like this. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but fastening two pieces of wood together can be an art and it matters whenever you're talking about something that takes as much weight as a single connection lag. This lag is going to pass through the 2x4 and into the upright, which means there's a screw through piece and a screw to piece. That means there's two separate holes, a screw through hole and a screw to hole. The screw through hole should be big. You don't gain any benefit by having the screw through hole tight, but the screw to hole has to be nice and tight to accommodate the threads. So when you size that, the smaller of the two, you'll be able to see the threads through it when you eye the, th the drill bit like this. But this one, the one that you pass through, should be the same diameter as this shank. And in my case, it's like a 3 8 diameter. Put it in with a 9 16 deep set so it doesn't slip off and bust your knuckles. And since you stayed the whole way to the end, the best trick of all, use some bar soap. You put bar soap on a lag and it will go in way smoother, way easier.